Thank you for joining us here on our live stream at New Birth Christian Center. It is our hope and prayer that this is an exciting, anointed, and revitalizing worship experience for you. When you are able, please be sure to visit us in person at New Birth Christian Center, located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard in the beautiful city of Stockton, California. You can also visit us online through Facebook and our website, newbirthstockton.com. Please be sure to like, comment, and share this video with your friends and family all over the globe. With your prayer and support, we can take this wonderful gospel from the neighborhood to the nations. of you that are joining us online welcome hopefully you've made your living room into your life room we're getting ready to worship we're getting ready to give God some praise we're getting ready to give God some glory this song says I can see the light I don't know what you woke up to this morning but God is still good we're gonna give him some worship on this morning Thank you. 
he will meet. He will meet the need. If you think about Jeremiah 29, he didn't take them out of the wilderness. What he told them was, go ahead and build houses and have children and prosper. But I know the plans. I, he knows the plans. And so today we worship the king of glory because he knows the plans. He has your life in his hands. And we worship on today. We give him the glory. We give you the glory, Jesus. We give you the glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bow down and say you 
tithing offering time our new birth christian center here at new birth we are believers in the complete word of jesus christ his word in malachi 3 and also luke 6 among many others instructs us to give freely and also offers natural and spiritual blessings to those who follow this guideline at nbcc we are continuously searching for new ways to meet the needs in our community. Through financial resource, we are able to continuously hold community outreach events and aid providing resource for those who may be in need. If you would like to donate financially to the Ministry of New Birth Christian Center, please visit us online at newbirthstockton.com. If you would like to offer financial support in person, please visit our service on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. or Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard. God bless you and please enjoy the rest of the service. It is now tithing offering time at New Birth Christian Center. Here at New Birth, we are believers in the complete word of Jesus Christ. His word in Malachi 3 and also Luke 6, among many others, instructs us to give freely and also offers natural and spiritual blessings to those who follow this guideline. At NBCC, we are continuously searching for new ways to meet the needs in our community. Through financial resource, we are able to continuously hold community outreach events and aid providing resource for those who may be in need. If you would like to donate financially to the Ministry of New Birth Christian Center, please visit us online at newbirthstockton.com. If you would like to offer financial support in person, please visit our service on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. or Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard. God bless you and please enjoy the rest of the service. It is now tithing offering time at New Birth Christian Center. Here at New Birth, we are believers in the complete word of Jesus Christ. His word in Malachi 3 and also Luke 6, among many others, instructs us to give freely and also offers natural and spiritual blessings to those who follow this guideline. At NBCC, we are continuously searching for new ways to meet the needs in our community. Through financial resource, we are able to continuously hold community outreach events and aid providing resource for those who may be in need. If you would like to donate financially to the Ministry of New Birth Christian Center, please visit us online at newbirthstockton.com. If you would like to offer financial support in person, please visit our service on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. or Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard. God bless you and please enjoy the rest of the service. It is now tithing offering time at New Birth Christian Center. Here at New Birth, we are believers in the complete word of Jesus Christ. His word in Malachi 3 and also Luke 6, among many others, instructs us to give freely and also offers natural and spiritual blessings to those who follow this guideline. At NBCC, we are continuously searching for new ways 
to meet the needs in our community. Through financial resource, we're able to continuously hold community outreach events in aid providing resource for those who may be in need. If you would like to donate financially to the Ministry of New Birth Christian Center, please visit us online at newbirthstockton.com. If you would like to offer financial support in person, please visit our service on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. or Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard. God bless you, and please enjoy the rest of the service. It is now tithing offering time at New Birth Christian Center. Here at New Birth, we are believers in the complete word of Jesus Christ. His word in Malachi 3 and also Luke 6, among many others, instructs us to give freely and also offers natural and spiritual blessings to those who follow this guideline. At NBCC, we are continuously searching for new ways to meet the needs in our community. Through financial resource, we are able to continuously hold community outreach events in aid providing resource for those who may be in need. If you would like to donate financially to the Ministry of New Birth Christian Center, please visit us online at newbirthstockton.com. If you would like to offer financial support in person, please visit our service on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. or Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard. God bless you and please enjoy the rest of the service. It is now tithing offering time at New Birth Christian Center. Here at New Birth, we are believers in the complete word of Jesus Christ. His word in Malachi 3 and also Luke 6, among many others, instructs us to give freely and also offers natural and spiritual blessings to those who follow this guideline. At NBCC, we are continuously searching for new ways to meet the needs in our community. Through financial resource, we are able to continuously hold community outreach events in aid providing resource for those who may be in need. If you would like to donate financially to the Ministry of New Birth Christian Center, please visit us online at newbirthstockton.com. If you would like to offer financial support in person, please visit our service on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. or Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard. God bless you, and please enjoy the rest of the service. It is now tithing offering time at New Birth Christian Center. Here at New Birth, we are believers in the complete word of Jesus Christ. His word in Malachi 3 and also Luke 6, among many others, instructs us to give freely and also offers natural and spiritual blessings to those who follow this guideline. At NBCC, we are con
our desire. I just wanna be with you. It's our desire. It's my just desire. I just wanna be with you. Oh, King of Glory, say. Just wanna, yeah, 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 yeah. How about go round the Feel this place. I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna be with you. Come on, worship Him, King of Glory, say. Everything that's going on around me. I just want to be. I just want to be in your presence. King of glory. King of glory. Fill this place. I just want to be with you. Oh, I just want to be with you. I just want to be. Now, I want everybody 18 years and younger sing this King of glory. Feel this place. Come on, you young people. Stand up to your feet. Just want to be with you. Yes, just want to be with you. Get those hands out of those pockets and shout out King of Glory. This is a holy moment. Just want to be Your presence is more than anything, more than anything. King of glory, say king. Feel this place. I just want to just want to be with you. Now everybody 18 and above, show our young people how to sing it out. Sing. Feel this place. Just wanna be, I just wanna be. Whoa, in your presence, in your presence. Just wanna be with you. Whoa, King of Glory, say, come on. King of Glory. Whoa, feel this place, feel this place, feel this place. Come on, come on, I just wanna. Just wanna be. Now all together in this room, shout out King of Glory. King of Glory. Yeah, feel this place. Feel this place. Oh, I just wanna. I just wanna be with you. Oh, I just wanna be. I just wanna be with you. Come on, come on, King of Glory, say. Come on, sing it one more time. King of glory. King of glory. Oh, feel this place right feel now. Feel this place this right now. Place. I just want to be with you. Whoa. I just want to be with you. Now worship him like you want Hallelujah. to be with him. Hallelujah. Worship him like you want to be with him. Hallelujah. Come on, worship him like you want to be in his presence. Worship him like you are in his presence. In the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of Peace. Thank you, Jesus. Troubles vanish. Hearts are mended. It's in the presence of the King. In the presence 
of Jehovah. Of Jehovah, God Almighty. God Almighty. He's my Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Troubles vanish. Troubles vanish. Hearts are mended. Hearts are mended. In the presence of the King. In the presence of the King. In the presence. In the presence of Jehovah. Of Jehovah, God Almighty, God Almighty, Prince of Peace, Prince of Peace, troubles vanish, troubles vanish, hearts are mended, hearts are mended. Oh, in the presence of the King, of the King, in the presence, it's in the presence of the King, say, of the King, whoa, it's in the presence. Of the King. Now worship him one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to learn how to be in the presence of Jesus. Y'all can have your seat. And I'm going to talk to my grandchildren after church. Because they're going to learn how to stand up when they're supposed to. I'll start with mine before I talk with yours. How about that? It's very important. Very important that we do everything necessary to keep the presence of God in the house. Amen. His presence must be the most important reason we come. I'm excited to see everyone in the room, and those who joined us online. I'm glad to know that you're there, but I've come today to see Jesus. Amen. If you've come today for anything else, be careful you don't miss God. It's what I'll be talking about a little bit today, but before I do, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray. There's a lot going on. Amen. There's a lot going on. And more than anything, we need Jesus. I said more than anything, we need what? God's people are going through right now. Um, Sister Betty, her husband went home to be with the Lord this week. Brother Ernest. And so, I know Sister Betty may be watching by this morning. If not, I know she's resting. And we've been talking and praying with her throughout her process. The beautiful thing about it is, is when you know someone knows the Lord in their home going, you have a reason to celebrate. Amen because you know that absence in this body equates to presence with the Lord. Brother Ernest has finished his fight here and has gone on to 
be with the Lord. We're praying for Minister Maisha, Pastor Sai, and the family. Minister Maisha's mother, Sister Ruby, is in the hospital right now. She's fighting for her life. We have a lot. We have a lot to pray for. There are those who are sick. Those who are going through. There are some who have dealt with COVID and been through COVID and are still battling in their bodies. Some of the lingering problems of COVID. You know, Deacon Hassan and Sister Chrissy took little Elijah to the hospital. I guess this morning, not feeling well. There is plenty to pray for. Uh, and, 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 and somebody used to say, if you don't have anything else to pray for, pray for me. If you can't find nothing to pray for, don't pray for me. <laughs> I need some folks that's already praying about some stuff to call my name. I need somebody that's already, I mean, if you don't have nothing to pray about, you ain't been praying. I need somebody that's been talking to God on my behalf. So if you ain't got nothing to pray for, if you ain't, if you ain't had no prayer time, this ain't the time to break it out for me. I'm praying for you. There's a whole lot, like I said, a whole lot going on. And I, 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 I just want to make sure we're going to pray for um, all those, all those concerned. Um, and also, uh, as I said a couple of weeks ago, not even a couple of weeks ago, my time has been so off. Um, our brother went home to be with the Lord. Uh, our brother William Charles Sherman. Um, and so we're also praying for the Ware family. Um, and, and we solicit your prayers and we thank uh, those of you who have called. Um, and this service will be um, toward the end of the month. Uh, so let's keep, especially the body, in prayer. Hear what I'm saying. You never know what somebody's going through. They may look all right. Things may look good. Just because they're not telling you every second, you know, I don't post my business on Facebook. <laughs> and if you post all yours on Facebook, don't get some don't get mad when somebody talk about it. You tell tell Facebook more than you will your own family. More than you will pray about. You'll tell folks on Facebook more than you talk to God about. You're going to talk to Facebook about it. Let's go to Luke, the 10th chapter. Uh, as you stand to your feet, um, we're going to pray and then we're going to go into the word. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, God for Sister Betty, God, we thank you that you're good to us in life. And we also thank you that you're good to us in passing. Your word declares you are able to take away the sting of death. And we thank you for your good hand in taking Brother Ernest home. You saw him. You saw his journey. And you saw fit to call him home. And we thank you in every instance. We thank you. God, for little Elijah, touch his body. This is our baby. Touch him like only you can. I ask that even the doctors be confounded at the mighty works of your hand. Whether it's considered major or minor, God, when our babies are sick, we don't feel good. 
So we ask by faith that you touch him. God, for Sister Ruby right now, I ask that you go to that room. We know that your will and your way is perfect. We ask that you go to that room. You said we can ask. All we have to do is believe that we would receive. The first thing we receive, God, is your perfect will. And we ask right now in Jesus' name, that you touch Sister Ruby's body. You are the regulator. We thank God for medicines and we thank God for the physician, but you are the master physician. You know how to do what men can't. And we trust you this morning and acknowledge you as Lord above all. Your healing virtue flow not just to her room, but those who surround her. Your healing virtue flow. You're a big God. There is nothing you cannot handle. And there is nothing that catches you by surprise. So we bless your name, Jesus, and we give you all glory and honor and praise. Come on and worship him in this room. Come on and worship him in this room. Come on and worship him in this room. Thank you, Jesus. Luke, the 10th chapter, we're going to begin reading at the 38th verse. I appreciate the praise and worship team. And, 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 and this morning, when, when they started singing that King of Glory, it just blessed me real good. Because we want him to be with us. And we should want to be with him. Amen. And you'll understand more as we read this word this morning. 38th verse reads, Now as they were traveling, this is uh, Jesus and his disciples. As they were traveling along, he entered a village. And a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home and she had a sister called Mary who was also seated at the Lord's feet and was listening to what listening to what but Martha was distracted with all her preparations and she came to him and said Lord you don't care that my sister has left me to do the serving by myself then tell her to help me but the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you're worried and distracted by what? Many things, but only what? One thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. And while you're standing, I'm going to read for you hearing Psalms, the 27th chapter and the fourth verse. It reads, one thing I have asked from the Lord, that shall I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to, and to meditate in his temple. You may have your seat. This morning, I'm going to talk about work and worship. Work and worship. With a subtopic kind of on the same line, it would be preparation or presence. Preparation or presence. You see, today, um, We, uh, we fight to be ministries of excellence, and we should. Amen. Uh, we read about those in, in, in the Bible where uh, 
the Bible says they had an excellent spirit. I was talking about Daniel and the, and, and, and the Hebrew boys. And the Bible spoke of them, uh, how they had an excellent spirit. And there should be a spirit of excellence. When you look around uh, your ministry, your, somebody say my ministry. When I look around my ministry, what I should see is a work of excellence. Amen. If I don't see that work of excellence, that means something is missing somewhere. Is that right? Don't get quiet on me now. If I don't see a work of excellence around me, that means something is missing somewhere. With that being said, it's hard to do an excellent work without the excellent one. It's hard to do an excellent work without the leading of the excellent one, the holy one. Deacon Hassan uh, taught an excellent class on Wednesday evening. And he was in, 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 his, in his class, if you, if you have a chance, go back and watch it. Uh, the things he, were, he was talking about was where I am teaching and where I'm going to be teaching uh, because we need the Holy Ghost today like never before. Amen. W Church, hear what I'm saying. We need the Holy Ghost. The Bible says it's the Holy Ghost that will come to lead and guide you into what? All truth. And a lot of times we, we, we when, when we see this, uh, a lot of us can get to the point uh, where we become like Martha. Um, uh, we, 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 we become either like Martha or like Mary. Now, uh, you have to understand the question. Uh, there's one question. Can work and worship coexist? Can preparation and presence coexist? And the answer to that is, oh, yes, they can. And, oh, yes, they should. You see, if you see me cleaning the church, that's not the time for you to get in the corner and start shouting. Somebody say amen. If you see me cleaning the church and the Holy Ghost falls on you, grab a vacuum and shout while you vacuum. Just dance the church clean. Because... You see, part of my worship is my work. Amen. The things I do ought to show that I want the presence of God. So my work should show a portion of of my worship. And sometimes my work is my worship. Sometimes my work is helping others come into the presence of the Lord while I worship. And a lot of times we get so caught up with work that we miss God because we're working. Amen. And God wants workers who will worship. And he wants worshipers who will work. You see, sometimes you got to slide off his lap and go ahead and clean the bathroom. I just need to be in his presence. I, oh, I don't have time. I just want to be in. You can't stay in his presence that long. Sometimes you got to come out of his presence and get the things done in the natural that need to be done. But then there are times when you must recognize that it's time to get out of the flesh so the spirit can take over. 
and control the environment. So the spirit can take over the flesh and do what? Control the environment. You see, a few moments ago, without music, we decided to keep on singing. <laughs> if the only time I can dance in his presence is when music is going on, then I'm not really dancing in his presence. I'm dancing in the presence of the music. If the only time I can say amen is when it feels good, then my amen is really telling you, you're giving the flesh what it wants. But sometimes I've got to open up and say, amen, even when it sounds like it hurts sometimes. Because the word of God comes to do more than make us feel good. The word comes to make us do good. Jesus is, Jesus is traveling here with his, with his disciples. And he comes into a village um, where uh, Martha's home is. Excuse me. Thank you, Elder. He comes into a village where Martha's home is. Now, Mary and Martha have worked because Jesus, and, 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 and we're going to find out that they had been preparing for him to come. We uh, have grown so accustomed to getting ready for Jesus after he's already been there for a while that we don't even see him sitting in the room a lot of times because we're, start, we're still trying to get ready for him. There was a young lady before the pandemic hit uh, in my bank, and I, I've, I've told this story before, and uh, she was telling me once she saw, um, uh, she asked what I did, and I told her I was a pastor, and she began to talk to me about church, and, and I challenged her to do some things, and, 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 and thank God she made her way back home. Um, and, and, and she said, you know, if you started a church here, I think you'd have a lot of people I say, well, I already have a building and I'm trying to get a lot of people right there. Uh, but she began, as I, as I would come in to the bank, uh, she began to testify more and more uh, about how she's fallen in love with God again and how she's fallen in love with her ministry again. And, and, and it, it, it was beautiful. And, and, and the pandemic hit. And uh, it, so one day she told me, um, you, you know, Bishop, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I just want you to know I haven't stopped going to church even though the pandemic hit. I'm watching, uh, I'm watching you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm watching on, on Sundays, um, and I'm totally involved in my church still. I said, that is so awesome. And then I, the next time I went back, and she, you know, because she gives me an update when, I, when, when she sees me and she has time to talk. And so uh, a couple times after that, um, she said, oh, Bishop, I want you to know I'm still enjoying it. My daughter and I, uh, you know, we, we, we sit down, uh, we, we turn the TV on, like you said, put it on the largest screen and, 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 and gather in front. And she said, we get, our, we get our bowls of cereal and sit there in our pajamas and enjoy service. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, I'm glad you're still going, but I'm going to give you a new challenge. I'm going to challenge you to get up early as early as you did when you had to drive to church. And I want you to get you and your baby ready. And I want you to get out of your bedroom into the in front of the largest screen in your house like you started off doing. And I want you and your baby this, to just worship. Don't sit there and watch it. 
take part in what's going on. When they tell you to stand up, stand to your feet. And I talked to her a few weeks after that and she said, Bishop, you know what? It's different. I, I, I feel the presence of the Lord more. She said, I understand what you were saying. I'm telling some of you at home, don't get used to sitting and so get so comfortable because I tell you almost every week, this is not a show, this is a service. We are here to usher in the presence of the Most High God and acknowledge his presence while we're here. And where you are at your homes, you should be feeling that, that same, now there's a difference, that, look, there's just a difference. I ain't, I'm just gonna tell you. There's a difference in being here and being at home. There just is. I love being around. You see, fellowship is something, and, and, and what this season is getting, is, is, is doing to the minds of the people, is telling you that you don't need to be that personal with people. You really don't need the fellowship. Hear what I'm saying. I need to be close to God's people. If we are the body of Christ, every once in a while, I need to touch my hand. That's right. Every once in a while, you see, because sometimes I need my elbow to feed my mouth. Elbow, you better get yourself ready to get back to the house. You see, this isn't going to last. And we're going, hear, hear what I'm saying, please. We are always going to take every precaution to make sure the people of God are safe when they come to the house. But don't lock yourselves in to staying at home. Some, some, some have, a, 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 there's a spirit of fear that has settled in some homes. Amen. There's a spirit of fear that has settled into some people until you need to do what you need to do. That, that was a good place for amen to. <laughs> but God has not given us the spirit of fear, but that of love and of power and of a sound mind. Now, if you come to church and tell me, Bishop, I'm not ready to hug yet, I'm not going to hug you and I'm not going to hate you. I'm going to keep on loving you. If you say, Bishop, I can't come back yet, I, th this is not the season for judgment. Hear what I'm saying? Because you don't know what the next one is dealing with. I'm not talking about judgment. I'm talking about preparing yourself for his presence. And so you don't fall out of practice. Some of you at home need to get up and just, just you know, just shout a little bit. When you come to the house, just move around your seat a little bit. It's all right. The kids came and told me last week, uh, Paul, Paul uh, uh, they, they, they said we could, we could dance a little bit in church. I said, well, then go on dance. But if they're the only ones dancing in service, because we've grown accustomed to watching service. You see, there are some things, uh, and, and, and understand this, the Lord told me revival is coming. There is a great revival that's coming to New Birth Christian Center that we must prepare for. The disciples are traveling. They come uh, to Martha's house. Martha, uh, who was a widow, uh, and, and, and her sister is there, and she's helping her uh, prepare the house for Jesus and his disciples. Now, uh, I, I don't know about you, but when a lot of people come into my house, preparation costs. 
because you're not going to come to my house and eat a bologna sandwich unless you just want a bologna sandwich. Pastor L is going to make sure you fed well. And if you need to, you'll be able to take a plate home. Because that's the way we were taught. Is that right? When you know. Now, if I know, you're, I know that you're coming to my house and I just make enough food for Lawanda and I and hurry up and put it in the refrigerator before you get there. <laughs> hurry up, baby. We got to eat. You know they're going to be here at 7. My, my, my dad, Elder Ware, uh, ha had a saying uh, when you came over, and uh, whether it was expected or unexpected, if you came to the house and there was food that was out, he would always say, whether he was drink, getting ready to drink a Pepsi and, and, and some peanuts or eat dinner, it didn't matter. Whether it was a pot of beans and cornbread, it didn't matter. He'd say, you better have some. What that meant was, I'm about to enjoy myself right now. You're welcome to enjoy it with me. Or I have just enjoyed myself, and I'd like to offer you some of what I enjoy. Somebody said, better have some. Martha was making sure that Jesus would be welcome in her home. Hear what I'm saying. There is nothing wrong with what Martha was doing. Amen. Martha was making sure Jesus wasn't coming to a nasty house with his disciples. And she had prepared, she was preparing for Jesus and everybody he would bring with him. You see, new birth, we've got to get back to the place where we prepare for Jesus and everybody he's going to send on any given service. Amen. We must be prepared. We must pray for what it is the will of the Lord is for whatever service, whether it's on Sunday or whether it's on Wednesday night uh, 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 in, in, the, in the coffee uh, time. Coffee and conversations. I almost forgot what to name. Whatever night it is, the question is, have you made ready for Jesus? Martha welcomed him into her home. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place, omnipotent Father of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome in this place. You see, when we are welcoming Jesus, now, if you are allergic to shrimp, I'm not going to make you any shrimp fried rice. I find out what it is you like and I prepare it before you get there. Our job is to find out what Jesus wants and prepare before he even enters the room. There, what, 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 you see, they used to have those praying mothers who, who just, you know, and we had prayer service before service. <laughs> yeah, it didn't matter your age. All the kids was on the front bench. You know, whether, and I was young, whether we was having conversation then if they called us having conversation, they let us know, uh, this ain't time to talk, it's time to pray. But if somebody approached some folks' kids today and told them this ain't time to talk, it's time to pray, they would get offended right there. Well, if you was praying, you wouldn't have time to talk to my children. Stop it. 
because our job is to make an atmosphere of order where Jesus is welcome. You see, Jesus got so welcome in the house that he reclined and began to just speak. Uh, he, Martha made him comfortable enough. Is that right? Martha made him comfortable enough to rest himself and begin to just speak. You see, I will just, and hear what I'm saying. There is nothing more important than hearing the word of the Lord. Nothing. Not singing, not playing, not ushering, not parking lot, none of that. Grass, nothing. Those things should be done in preparation for him to get here. Oh, I'm teaching good this morning. Because when he gets here, the moment he rests, he's going to begin to speak. What do I come for? I come for a word from the Lord. I come because my heart might be heavy. I come because I may have a need in my life. And sometimes I come just to lift him up because of everything, the wonderful things that he has done. But I come to be the presence of the Lord. She had a sister, the 39th verse says, named Mary who was seated at the Lord's feet and was listening to what? His word. You see, what we must beware of and be careful of is that we don't work so hard that we miss the word of God. Because work and worship do coexist. Work and worship does coexist. They can both be in the same house at the same time. We may not all have to work at the same time, but we must discern when it is time to work and when it is time to worship. Pastor Simon came across to check on me this morning and make sure I had everything I needed. And I said, Pastor, I'm good. I appreciate it. I'll carry my stuff over. When I got up here, I grabbed my Bible and my pad. Elder Ella saw I needed some water and a towel, so he brought it to me. But he didn't bring it to me and go home. Why? Because it's time for the word. You see, and if we are not careful, we get more caught up in what we do than who he is. I'm a preacher. I love to preach, and I can preach. But you see, I look for my opportunities to sit and hear a good word. It was a good word taught on Wednesday night, and I didn't have to teach it. I was able to receive the word. There are ministers here who can preach and teach and pray. Thank God. But I've got to know when it's time for me to stand up. You see, I'm not even supposed to be here this Sunday morning. But I came to work. Because sometimes, uh, Pastor Sai said, I couldn't come in this morning, Pastor. They called me to work. You see, I was supposed to leave, but I couldn't because they called me in to work. And I love my job. Because there are perks that come with my job. Sometimes I can just sit with the boss and just talk. Take him on the ride. He's just getting my car whenever he want to. 
I love what I do. And then there are times like Jesus, I got to get out of here and go to the other side. <laughs> Jesus was here at this house and he's speaking and, and, and Mary is sitting there taking up every word. You see, because no matter how hard you work, there comes a point where we must all find ourselves at the feet of Jesus. There is no job so important that you can't find your way to the feet of the master. There's nothing so important that has to be done here that we neglect the presence of the true and living God. Nothing that important. The Bible says that Martha was distracted with all her preparations. She came to Jesus because she was upset. Now watch this. Jesus, you, 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 you see my sister? I'm here preparing. Here I am preparing for your presence. I'm here dusting, making sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. Getting all the mess out of the church. You, you, you see, there are some people, all they worry about is the mess that go on in the church. Ooh. See, that's why I can't have go to church because all the church peoples and everything be talking about people and everything. And they, and they doing this and everything. And all we have is those who are walking around trying to clean up a mess. Do like the Williams brothers said and sweep around your own front door. Before you try to sweep around mine. You see, because we have people who all they want to recognize is what's not right with the church. And it's become the biggest excuse today uh, for people not going. Well, you know, this is wrong and this is wrong and this is wrong. And sometimes I want to say, is anything right? But Jesus told Martha, hold on, honey. The stuff you're doing is distracting you. You're failing to recognize. You're preparing for someone who's already here. Was Jesus in or out of the room? He was there. She was still preparing for his presence. You see, Stop preparing for who's already there. Don't clean up your house after I get there if you're expecting me for company. That shows a lack of preparedness more than it shows you're preparing. What it shows was, what it shows is this, my coming is really not that important to you. Oh, this is good. When we fail to set an atmosphere for Jesus, what that says is his presence is just not that important to us. My job is more important than his presence. There is not one of us in this ministry, including me, that is so important that we can miss the presence of Jesus for. You, everybody understand what I'm saying? His presence is so important to me that if I have to do it without you, I will. Be, 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 because
because it's about what he wants to do and what he wants to say and who he wants to touch. It's not about me. Look here. Jesus was saying, you're walking around and you're working and you're saying it's for me, but I'm sitting right here. And you're still working around me. Uh, and you're upset with your sister because she's found the necessary thing. Because everything that goes on is necessary. And it's our job every service to find the most necessary thing. You see, during this year plus, we found out that sometimes some of the things we do wasn't necessary. The only thing that was important was getting to Jesus. They said we couldn't unlock those doors out there and bring people in. And God said, you've got to now be creative. We didn't just pull cameras in this, in this sanctuary. We've had cameras almost the last 20 years of this ministry. They got so old, we had to replace them. <laughs> and thank God for some folk who stepped up and said, Pastor, we're going we're, we're gonna to help advance. We're going to help make progress so you can keep preaching the word while we are at home and can't gather. But what is most necessary? You see, for some people, they can't receive this word because I don't have on a suit and tie. Hear what I'm saying? I'm just as, as, as powerful in my polka dot shirt and, and the Lord spoke with the, to the praise and worship team because they got on the same color. <laughs> Say that, Sister Monica. Our God is a God who coordinate. Coordinate. But some people would consider me to be less powerful because I don't have on a suit. Understand, the same power that's in the suit and ties in the shirt and jeans. But we have qualifiers now as to what it will take for us to receive from the man or the woman of God. For some people, if Pastor LaWanda was up here preaching, they wouldn't receive the word because she's a woman. And they would miss Jesus. Because of their qualifiers. You see, when you want the presence of Jesus, you, you, you see, Martha, when you want the presence of Jesus, sometimes you got to forget about Mary like she forgot about you. At some point, Mary put her broom down because she was sweeping the floor. I don't know if y'all read that in the Bible. No, she wasn't. She was sweeping the floor. She was washing the dishes. And Jesus sat down and began to speak. You see, there's something about the presence of the true and living God. It pulls you away from what you might be doing at one point. There are times when I'm out here and I might be riding the mower and the presence of God begins to speak. I put it right away. And, and, and sometimes they'll tell you if they're around here working, I say, everybody go home. Why? Because God is calling me closer to him right now. And I'm going to move from my work to my place of worship. I, 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 I'm going to move from my preparedness, uh, from my preparing into his presence. Whether it's here on the grounds or whether it's there at your home, you must have a place dedicated to his presence. He said, Martha, wait a minute. 
Distractions. Distractions. We were here during powerful services and the enemy will always do something to distract so the word can't be consumed. There are things that's going to go on in some of your lives today that's going to come to distract you from what I preached. And the Bible says the enemy comes to steal the seed quickly. You've got to put the devil on notice. I'm going to meditate on this thing. You want me to tell her to help you, Martha, but I'm telling you to join her. In other words, you need me to tell you right now, you've been too distracted. I'm talking to someone this morning. I'm telling you, you've been too distracted. Martha, he tells her in the 41st, you're worried and distracted by many things. This is distracting you, and this is distracting you, and that is distracting you, and that is distracting you, and that is upsetting you, and that is upsetting you. None of that matters in my presence because my presence comes to deal with your distractions. Is that right? His pre the presence, listen, the presence of the Lord comes to lift burdens his anointing comes to destroy yokes. That's what the presence and the anointing of God is for. And hear what I'm saying. I wouldn't sit in a house that's not anointed. To do so is a waste of time. He said, you, 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 you moved about right now by many distractions. I want you to regain your focus. God is saying to his people in this season, it's time to regain your focus. Look, we, we, we begin to declare with all these politics and, 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 and those being killed by officers and, 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 and then on top of that, a pandemic. This year has been a very distracting year. God is saying, there have been many distractions. You see, and understand this, distractions are not going to stop because you love Jesus. Some of you are glued to the news networks right now because there's a trial going on. And you walking around upset every day, all day. If you're walking around upset every day and all day, find yourself in the presence of the Lord and say this, I'm going to give God as much time as I give CNN. I'm, I, I'm going to talk to God as much as I watch CNN. I'm going to talk to God as much as I watch this trial because I need to balance some stuff out. Because if I don't, I'm just going to stay angry. With what's going on in the world right now, there's enough going on in our nation to keep people angry. And understand, that's the job of the media. Oh, that's good preaching. Media coming from the word medium, to stand in between. And they stand in between, depending on what channel you choose, they stand between and give you a view from them that many people check. There are people who take, <laughs> they take Facebook at face value. Somebody said, Things are going to happen on Easter Sunday. Everybody started getting ready for things to happen on Easter Sunday. Stuff that was never going to happen. 
And you, you, let me tell you, you know it's bad when it starts off by saying, you know, they said on Facebook. In my mind, I'm saying, here we go. Close that book, pick up this one. You see, you've got to decide. We, we, we have to make some decisions here. How bad do I want his presence? Is what I'm doing attracting him? Is what I'm doing making room for him? He said, one thing is necessary. Mary chose that good part. And that's not going to be taken away from her. He said, there's only one thing that's necessary. Psalms 27, 4 of the psalmist said, one thing uh, I have asked from the Lord, I've desired, and that shall I seek, to behold the beauty of uh, that, that shall I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. It should be be the desire of the believer to get to the house of the Lord. Somebody say one thing. You, you, you see, you've got to get to the place where in your mind somewhere in the week you get to the place. I can't wait to get to church. Look at what the psalmist is saying. That's what I'm going to seek after, that I might dwell in his house all the days of my life. You see, somebody should have been saying, look, this place has been shut down for all this time. I, 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 if nothing else, I'm going to get up and just drive around my church. I'm going to get up and I'm going to get to the church and just walk around the sanctuary and just pray for a moment because that's my church. It's God's house, but it's my church. The psalmist was saying, there's one thing that concerns me right now. There's one thing that's on my mind that's getting to his house and inquiring in his temple. I want to behold his beauty there. I want to see him. That's the one thing I'm concerned about. Hear what I'm saying. Uh, now understand, you. yes, we should be a, a church in the work of excellence, but next to the presence of God, I don't care what the music sounds like. Thank God for good music and musicians and singers and, 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 and good ushers. And, and, but if everybody sat down, I promise you I can still see Jesus. Why? Because that's the main thing I'm concerned about. Yes, I'm concerned that the bathrooms aren't clean. I don't want to use a nasty bathroom. Yes, I'm concerned that the floors are vacuumed. Yes, I'm concerned because I'm a musician that everybody is singing the right note. Yes, I'm concerned that the grass is cut. Yes, I'm concerned, but that is not my main concern. My main concern makes me ask the question, how bad do you want to see him? If they don't sing your song this week, are you coming back next week? If they don't shake your hand this week, are you coming back next week? If I don't preach a message this week, are you coming back next week? Because the same Jesus. The same Jesus that was here when they sang your good song is going to be here and was here today and he'll be here next week. The same Jesus that was here when the bathrooms were clean last time is going to be here next time when the bathrooms are clean. The same Jesus. Listen, Jesus just doesn't stop by because you say you coming. He says, I'm going to be there. Meet me there. Somebody shout one thing. One thing I'm going to keep on my mind. One thing I'm going to meditate on. That's getting to his house so I can see the beauty of who he is. So I can see the holiness of who he is. So I can come in holiness and worship the Holy One. I'm going to get myself together. I'm going to fix my mind. I'm going to fix myself up. Why? Because I'm coming to see Jesus. One thing, you see, 
We've got to get to the point, and I'm about to close in just a few moments. We've, we've got to get to the place, uh, like Paul said in Philippians 3, the 13th verse. He said, brethren, I don't count myself to have achieved yet. I, I, well, I don't, I do not regard myself as having laid hold on it yet. Somebody say yet. What is he talking about here? He's talking about the prize. I haven't put my hands on the prize yet, but one thing. There go those words again. But one thing I do, I forget everything that lies behind me. And I press, press toward what? The one thing, press toward what? The prize, press toward what? The presence, press toward what? The king of king, press toward what? The Lord of lords. It moves me past my fleshly desires. It moves me past the place of what my eyes are looking for. It moves me past the place of what Charlie feels like he needs because I know if I can lay hold on him, I've got the prize. I, I know if I can, like the woman said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. So I'll press through this crowd. I'll move through this crowd because the only reason I'm here is to touch Jesus. The only reason I'm here is because he's the one who can make me whole. The only reason I'm here is because he can fix what's wrong in my body. The only reason I'm here is because he can fix what's wrong in my mind. That's why I'm here for this one thing. One thing I do. Hear what I'm saying, church. We've got to get back to the one needful thing. Got to get back to the one thing Jesus is requiring. He requires our presence. He invites us. But he says, don't go without it. Paul said, I'm forgetting what lies behind and I'm reaching. I'm reaching forward. I'm letting the stuff behind me go. I've experienced some hurt behind me now I've experienced some things I didn't want to go through but it's behind me now I've experienced some sickness but it's behind me now I've experienced some heartache but it's behind me now I've experienced some things I didn't want to go through but it's behind me now so I've got to reach forward somebody say forward I've got to reach forward in my home and forget about the mess that's behind our marriage. I've got to reach forward with my children. I've got to reach forward with my spouse. I've got to reach forward in my finances because God is going to bring me out. And for him to bring me out, I've got to let go of what went on in the past concerning my money and declare today is a new day in my finances. I'm going do what's right. I'm going to give God belong, what belongs to him. And in that I'm reaching forward. Some of you need to sit with your families and begin to declare together we're moving forward. I, I don't, I don't want to stay here. I can't keep going through this. I don't, want, I don't want this in my life anymore. I'm moving forward. Because moving forward is a personal choice. You see, whether it's work or whether it's worship, it's a personal choice. I can choose to worship or I can choose not to worship. I can choose to praise. 
I can choose his presence or I can choose to keep trying to prepare for his presence. I want to see him. I want to touch him. I want to feel his presence. New birth, that's the most important thing to me. Not just right now. That's the most important thing to me, period. For a lot, for some, it may not be your goal. <laughs> if it's not your goal, you're going to have a hard time. Here. They may not say anything at the other place, but here. Why? Because his presence is like heaven to me, somebody said. When I, you see, the prophet said, when I saw him, he was high and lifted up. And his glory, the train of his robe, it filled the temple. Glory filled the whole room. There was not a space, hear what I'm saying. There was not a space empty that his glory didn't feel. We may be separated by chairs right now, but let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost is right next to you. All of our chairs may not be in this room, but the glory of God is filling this place right now. Listen, the glory of God is in your house right now. Let it saturate the very place you live. One thing. One thing I've desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, Psalms 27. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord and behold his beauty all the days of my life and inquire in his temple. As you stand to your feet, praise and worship team is going to get ready to come in a moment. But I want to challenge you. When you come to worship, whether you're here or in your life room, come prepared to lift up the name of Jesus. No matter whether we're live in, 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 in person, if it's on a Wednesday night, come prepared to receive from the Lord. Because God is going to speak. God is going to speak. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this time that we've gathered just to worship you. Thank you for your presence that we feel right now. God, concerning everything, you are still in control and you sit on the throne. Nothing happens without you say so. So we look to you, Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. God, where we've missed your presence, we ask that you forgive us. Where, the, where, where, where we have been too busy and allowed our flesh to get in the way of your presence, forgive us. Where some have been distracted by many distractions, we ask that you forgive us. We come to you, Jesus, because we need you. Let your presence rest, rule, or reign. Let it reign and abide in our hearts both now and forever. We seek your face. Your presence is all we want. Your face is all we want to see. So we're going to worship you. We're going to give you praise. We're going to dance in your presence. We're going to sing in your presence. We're going to praise in your presence. In your perfect and matchless name, Jesus. Amen. You may have your seats. For those who have been faithful in your giving, we thank you. You see, faithful giving makes the difference. Amen. Faithful giving makes a difference. The tithe and the offering. Give to God what belongs to God. I'm not taking out a lot of time today 
give to God what belongs to God so he can bless you. Ask him to forgive you for where you've not done right, where your tithe and offering is concerned. And we talked about moving forward today. Today is the day that some of you get up and move forward in obedience. We're getting ready to go back into praise and worship. God bless you. We love you. Show the love of the Lord.
Amen. Just uh, give a great God thank you. He's good. How many of you believe that? Before we close, I just wanted to um, remind you all that ticket sales are winding down for the women's tea. And so um, if you would like to attend the women's tea, it is socially distanced. And, um, you know, we'll be outside. We'll be outdoors on the Ware Farm. Um, tickets are $40 per person. Um, so if you would like to purchase a ticket, you can um, go to the Eventbrite link and um, – you register. So when you register, you don't have to pay. But once you register your ticket uh, for, for you and whoever you attend with, you have um, three different options to pay. You can pay via Cash App, you can pay via Venmo, and you can pay um, through our website. Um, or if you're in attendance and you're here, um, you can see um, Minister Audrey, Sister Jocelyn, and you can swipe your card here or you can leave um, a cash or check with us. And so uh, once you register on the website, the details on how to pay will be sent to you via email um, also with the reminder and so once you register because um, you don't have to pay on the website and we usually sell out um, you will have two days to make your payment um, and then if you are unable to we will um, release that spot so somebody else um, can purchase the ticket so make sure you register and if you have any questions you can see me um, following service and I will be happy to assist you um, with any needs that you have. And right now we're going to go ahead and close in prayer. Lord, we thank you for today's service. We thank you just for meeting us here, God. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy, God. We thank you for your presence and your anointing, God. We thank you for the word that was delivered today. God, I ask that you allow it to saturate our minds, God. Allow it to stay with us this week, God, and allow it to be our motivation, God, on how we can serve you, God, and worship you, God. Now, God, I ask that you cover us in this week. You keep us, keep your hedge of protection around us, God. Allow us to be salt and light as we go into our neighborhoods, God, and just be with us. In your name we pray, amen. You are now released. Please exit. Thank you for joining us here on our live stream at New Birth Christian Center. It is our hope and prayer that this is an exciting, anointed, and revitalizing worship experience for you. When you are able, please be sure to visit us in person at New Birth Christian Center, located at 1234 William Moss Boulevard in the beautiful city of Stockton, California. You can also visit us online through Facebook and our website, newbirthstockton.com. Please be sure to like, comment, and share this video with your friends and family all over the globe. Stay connected to us because with your prayer and support, we can take this wonderful gospel from the neighborhood to the nations.